Hello world! This video airs on Sunday, January 16th. I'm pretty sure I've got the date right this time. This week in City Skylines, I have discovered how to actually use the dynamic resolution mod. Thank you, Kriegs. And I have placed a lot of rocks. rocks. Have you been prepping your cities for the airports DLC that releases on the 25th? We have quite a bit to unpack about that DLC, so be sure to stay tuned. We will be getting into that in just a couple of minutes. But first, we are going to jump on over to this guy for some workshop goodies. Thanks, Toad! While we usually focus on lesser exposed posts, here is a top one from Reddit that demonstrates a point all too well. Kelva Raho shows us the same screenshot with vanilla graphics and then with color corrective mods. No different assets here, just the graphics. And what a neat little post. Really shows you what can be done with the game. Moving to the workshop. Here is the front page. Three of these caught Toadie's eye enough to download and try out. This modern tram depot from CyberSyfe works alongside another building of his. In game, it functions as a unique building with an entertainment value, but I bet with a little finagling, you could get some trams happening in and around it. Then we have this super neato forestry residential area from Lumino. It's used with the industry's DLC. And honestly, I want to live here. Those little triangle houses, little glass sections, little trees, little fences. I love them. And Ryan Cat brings us this beautiful bell tower and look at it. 10 out of 10 would become a hunchback and live up top it. It places in a tiny one by one square. Now Toad just needs to figure out where to put it. Wink. Now, in Workshop Gems, I am going to make you work this week. I demand that you check out these parks that Rec 67 has to offer. They come with parking, without parking, in all sorts of sizes, with greenery, with industrial props. There's just so many. Your homework this week is to check out Rec's Workshop, get subscribing, and let me know which one is your favorite. Now. I've heard that you've heard a thing or two about this airports DLC that's coming out or something. And Toady here is ready to break down all the new stuff that we learned this week. Turd! Thanks, guy. This week, we have learned a lot about the airports DLC that's coming out. There was a lot of it shown on the weekly City Skylines stream. And City Planner Plays has put out two videos on the City Skylines YouTube channel showing off the DLC as well. Links to everything will be in the description below, but I am going to go over how Maddie built the airport during the live stream, and then I will go through a list of all of the new information that I was able to pick up. The live stream started with a rewatch of the trailer for the DLC, and then it went into the actual building of an airport. Maddie first zoned the area needed similar to how you do for Park Life Industries campus DLCs, except that when you zone the area that you need for the airport DLC, it will also be flattening all of the land, like as you're zoning, and it uses up soil just like you normally would when you're landscaping. The DLC does, however, add the ability to purchase soil, so that's less of an issue. Then Maddie started building the airport itself by starting with a runway. She built the runway quite long, but said it doesn't have to be. The minimum length required is apparently close to the runways from the original or the vanilla airport assets. Once drawn, the runway will show like suggested on off points for where you should be connecting the taxiways. Then she placed down the main building. There are options for single level main buildings or two level main buildings. They have built in roads that you connect to using the roads that go to your city. 
Next came the terminals slash concourse. They are placed as a network, which is really fun. And then the air traffic controller was next. It connects to either the terminal network, concourse network, or the main building. You are also later on able to place down a concourse hub. The one that Maddie showed off had a built-in metro connection. Then she placed airplane stands along the terminal network. They came in small, medium, large, and planes of the like corresponding sizes will spawn at those airplane stands. The last thing needed to make the airport functional was to connect the runway to the airplane stands via the use of taxiways. It is worth noting that the taxiways are one way only, so there will be a little bit of planning needed and you cannot do an elevated taxiway or a tunnel taxiway. Same thing with the runways, I think. And the airport was now functional. To add to it, Maddie put down the airport hotels she put down some more terminal concourse networking. She added lounges along that concourse and placed an aviation fuel building. Then placed park planes and hangars that are like little decorative buildings and an above ground metro station and a bus station that comes with the DLC. She attached them to the airport. Once the airport had enough beauty and passengers served to reach level three, which is the max level of this DLC, the ability to create an airline unlocked. Now to do this, Maddie had to place an airline headquarters building, which does not need to be within the zoned area that you do for the airport. And when you create the airline, it lets you set ticket prices and choose the like logo and color of your airline, really similar to what you do with the campus sporting teams. Apparently other airlines will also fly in and out of your airport. Then they moved on to cargo, which can use the same runway and be in the same zoned area as the passenger airport stuff. In the same way that the passenger side of things use the terminal network, the cargo side of things uses a cargo airport road. Then after placing that, Maddie connected cargo specific plane stands to these roads, then taxiways to these plane stands from the runway, and finally the cargo terminal. They did confirm that you cannot make a separate airline like logo and color for the cargo if you put it within the same airport zoning. That is the gist of the building process, but there was a lot of information shared as well, and I have a list. Uh, apparently this DLC and the two content creator packs are all topics that were very frequently asked for by the community. And often when a DLC releases, mods will break, right? And modded saves. Apparently Colossal Order has worked with modders to do everything possible to prevent this. They seem to be pretty optimistic that modded players won't feel a strong impact. The new airports DLC comes with five new steam achievements, three new maps, two new chirper hats, and decor items like fences and plants. For transit vehicles, it adds an airport metro vehicle, which will hold the standard 180 passengers, an airport train vehicle, which they didn't actually say the capacity of the passengers that it will hold, an articulated bus that holds 50 passengers, and a double-decker bus that holds 60 passengers. There are lots of new airplane designs and the bigger airplanes actually retract their landing gear shortly after takeoff. There are three styles of airport that you can build. You can build classic, modern, or ultra modern. Maddie said that you can mix and match them. The more modern assets are more expensive than the less than the classic, I guess. Each style includes a small terminal, small two-story terminal, a large terminal, concourse, concourse hub, and control tower. They did not add parking lots or like normal new city roads. The cargo airport roads that were added can be used anywhere in your city, but there's no specific benefit to it other than the way that they look. There is not a limit to the number of airports that you can build other than space. And they did confirm that vanilla slash console players will not be getting anything above the nine tiles. They aren't able to unlock more than nine tiles. And they explained that this is due to limitations in processing power, not necessarily just to unlock another tile, but all of the things that you would put into that tile would require far too much processing power for what is realistic. There will also be a free update along with the DLC. Uh, patch notes for it will be available the day before the DLC drops, so January 24th. 
on next Tuesday. So this coming Tuesday's stream, the 18th, they will be covering the Maps Content Creator Pack. And then the week after, on the 25th, they will be covering the New Vehicles Content Creator Pack. So that is a lot of info. I would say if you haven't watched the two videos from City Planner Plays on the City Skylines channel, definitely worth watching. They're only a couple minutes each. This week's comment show off is just a wee bit different. From last week's Twix video, we have this comment from GP. And I also want to show off this butte from Genesis. Genesis was in stream and asked to see Toadytopia from a like top down view and then whipped this up real quick. It is so cool. Thank you, Genesis. Gang, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Click the card on screen if you want to witness my most recent prop line tool epiphany and I will catch you next time.